Howdy y'all, Dean Stilly here from the official home of Unofficial Grateful Dead and Music News uh, reporting on night two with Lockin. It's going to be a little different. I, I just uh, uh, got home, went right to from the venue last night to the airport, had a 6 a.m. flight to catch you. Uh, but I got to get in, get out. I, you do an event like that and you run the risk, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I leave my mind there. Uh, in festival land and uh, you know uh, have a hard time re-entering into into real life you got to be careful you, you end up uh, convincing yourself that you know you're born to spend your life dancing in a field or something I want to make sure I didn't do that so I got a 12-hour day ahead of me uh, we got the 6 a.m. flight got to the airport we got some of the Tedeschi trucks band is there we got O'Teal and Jess are there O'Teal's manager Ben was there uh, we had enough people and, and management we, we could have started our own variety show uh, uh, right there on the spot uh, everybody was way too tired for that but uh, uh, listen uh, Peter Shapiro, he's a party throwing motherfucker. That guy can throw down when it comes to th to having a party. Uh, I don't know anybody that throws a better party than Pete. Uh, it, uh, what a weekend! What a weekend! Yesterday, I, I get there. It was a hot hot day yesterday. I get there and a uh, blues travelers playing. Uh, great to hear them. I, I remember when they were on the rise. Uh, you know, uh, play in New York City. Uh, they had something very special. Seeing them a slew in the early days and wetlands and stuff like that, clubs around New York, and uh, uh, great to hear them. Cheryl Crow might have been the surprise of the weekend. Uh, kind of like it seemed odd to me that she was on the program. Uh, I wasn't so sure about that, but uh, Cheryl Crow was dynamite. She really she put on a great show. Looked great. Sounded great. Uh, really really strong show then you got Tedeschi trucks band again uh, uh, man they just uh, it was their weekend they slayed it uh, you get some random thoughts when uh, when you're watching the music and you're participating there I, I get these random thoughts go through my head and uh, one of them I think to myself if there was a battle of the bands uh, that, that was actually a battle uh, we were gonna duke it out uh, I put my money on the Tedeschi Trucks band. Uh, number one, there's 22 of them up there. Uh, number two, a bunch of them look like they spend some time in the hotel gym. Uh, that's a band that might whoop your ass. That's a that's a strong crew to travel with. Uh, they were just dynamite, boy. They they ended uh, they ended that set in in fine fashion. That was that was just a an amazing jam. What a what a great way to. To, to kick off the the last day of locking you know I, I watched some of the chatter out there and uh, some people might be upset because uh, I don't have too many uh, critical things to say I, I personally thought it was a a great show I, I mean I had a ball I, sometimes I think you you maybe shouldn't even review shows that you're at because you're having too much fun you with tons of people that you love uh, listening to the music you love played by musicians you love so either way it's gonna be a fine time uh, it was no different yesterday yesterday we get this thing started uh, with with playing in the band and playing in the band is uh you right right to the deep end of the pool opening up the show i, I like that I, I don't have any problems with uh, getting a little psychedelic right away uh, uh that one stretch your mind out like saltwater taffy uh kind of uh, fine way to start no problems with that uh, into uncle john's uh, seamless and uh, that was smooth and uh, you know from there we get loser I, I'm not saying it's a, it was an epic loser but uh, it was okay in the middle that loser got lost uh, seemed like they didn't know uh, should someone sing a verse should uh, should someone take a solo uh, what the fuck happens now and uh, it didn't seem like anybody uh, was too assertive uh, taking charge so uh, they just got on with another verse uh, a little bit awkwardly. Uh, anyway, Mr. Charlie, after that, uh, I'm always going to be happier than the motherfucker when they play Mr. Charlie. Love to hear that. Uh, to me, that song can go on for a week and a half. I wouldn't complain about it. Loved hearing that. Thought it was dynamite. Uh, uh, I think this is a good time. You, you get Althea. Althea, maybe not the strongest Althea you're ever going to hear. Uh, uh, probably not even close. 
but uh, I'm not, not crazy about Mayer embellishing too many of the lyrics in Althea, but uh, you know, it was Althea nonetheless, a uh, good, good tune. Uh, closing it with Sugar Mags was strong. I thought that was great. Uh, uh, we're uh, forgetting the words to uh, to Sugar Mags. Uh, you can understand that. He's only been singing it for uh, almost 50 years. So, uh, you know, it's, you got to cut a brother some slack. But the jam was great. I, I thought it was a fine way to, to finish the first set. Really, the first set, uh, I thought... Oh, oh, O'Teal was playing great. Uh, I don't think Mayer was underplaying like he did the first night. I, I thought he was bringing his talent to the table, and it was on display. Uh, anyway, w w brief intermissions. Uh, not uh, not too much for intermissions here at Lock, and I like that. They take a really short break. Uh, Weir's been saying for 50 years we'd we'll be back in just a little bit. And that's usually a lie. It usually takes them a long fucking time to come back. But uh, he told the truth this weekend. Uh, they were back in just a little bit. Uh, the band takes the stage and uh, Shakedown. Uh, I'll tell you, Shakedown, uh, someone installed some speed bumps on Shakedown Street. Traffic was moving slow on Shakedown. Uh, I'll tell you why it didn't matter to me because... Uh, uh, the song started to develop and, and all of a sudden I heard the tone of, of Bramford sax and, and it just unlocked a plethora of memory molecules in my neurology that just brought me back to all these different experiences with Bramford Marsalis uh, over the years uh, wow I, I mean re really it just it was that soothing comfort uh, and the sound of his horn is kind of like it's like Miles. He's got a very distinct tone and a, a, a dynamite turn. Really, just turned the song into something special. Uh, it, it developed and, and became something. I, I didn't have high hopes for it when it started. Uh, you, you maybe would hope to get estimated next. You don't. You get Bird Song, but the Bird Song jam was uh, uh, that jam was. Uh, just the right amount of confusing and I mean, there was multiple time signatures going on all at the same time. O'Teal was all over it. He was he was going off, making it funky, going to all kinds of outer space with it and uh, him and Bramford were bonding. You're not going to shake Bramford loose. Like, you know, if uh, Bramford, he'll go out as far as you want to go and he proved that again last night. He, he's not afraid of getting out there. A matter of fact, uh, once you get out as far as you think you can go, Bramford might take you a little further. Uh, to me, he, him on the stage was, it's like Michael Jackson playing, uh, Michael Jackson, like Michael Jordan uh, playing basketball. It just makes everybody around him play better. And uh, that was the case last night. Uh, eyes, we knew we were probably going to get that one. You get eyes after that. The eyes jams found all the right places. Uh, Really, really fun jams, dancing hard. Uh, we're having a ball uh, there on a beautiful piece of property in Virginia. Uh, uh, I got a text, uh, texting a little bit back and forth with Pete Shapiro, invited me to uh, watch some of the show from the stage over there. And uh, it was very special watching those guys interact with each other. And uh, uh, man, they were having a blast. It was uh, O'Teal and Bramford were bonded strong. Uh, everybody was having a really good time. I'm not sure about the whole stage thing. Uh, to me, uh, you know, it's nice that uh, the that, uh, that mayor, you know, and, and Kaminti like to connect. But to me, it's awkward when they're too close. Uh, they just seem too close now. Uh, Jeff does his little thing, and, and John make his little face. They're too close. It's weird when they're that close. It's kind of like looking at your buddy from a distance and... Uh, and, and you know giving him one of these and then uh, but, but you don't want to look him too close in the face that feels weird a anyway that's how that thing comes across to me i say put the stage back like it was uh, uh what the fuck do i know i'm uh, uh, just a hack uh giving some commentary here some analysis on uh, my favorite musicians uh, uh, anyway we get Terrapin next uh, by then i really i'm having such a good time uh, there might have been some uh uh, some uh, some snags and terrapin, but I, I'd really uh, I thought that uh, they were just having a blast. The band was having too good of a time to care about a couple of hiccups. Uh, uh, 
music to me sounded strong. This was a great night. You, you drums, O'Teal joins everybody for drums. Everybody has a blast up there, beating the shit out of animal skins and plastics, and uh, it just really. Uh, I'm shaking it down. I think I danced uh, through most of the drums. We got we got space uh, come up. It was short. Out of it, uh, they get right to the morning dew. My favorite, you know, so one of my favorite songs in the world, and I thought Weir was great on the do. I thought Mayer was uh, played with emotion. I thought that uh, he was fully invested in that song, uh, uh, and I think uh, the, law, the 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 uh, the body of people that were there celebrating in the music uh, with the band were all fully invested in that song emotionally and otherwise. It was. Uh, uh, just a great, great moment. Not Fade Away's next, and Not Fade Away found, you know, great places. That one uh, just uh, got bent up a little bit. It reconstructed itself. It fell apart. It came back together. Uh, that was a lot of fun, and uh, maybe uh, the the MVP of the weekend might might go to the fans for the for the Not Fade chant. Uh, that was the best not fade away chant since the 90s. It didn't fall apart. It was strong. It was intact. Uh, uh, Bramford came out to help a little bit. It, it was still going strong when the band came out for the encores. Uh, really, really uh, kudos to all of us getting the not fade chant right. I, I was on the stage listening, so it, it was loud from up there. Everybody was getting it right. Nobody was giving in. Uh, it continued from the time they left the stage to the time they got back on it. Uh, really, really something. Uh, you get your encores, you get broke down, you know, that's the end of the tour, end of the festival, uh, end of the summer. Here we go, we get broke down, uh, going home. Uh, that's what we're all doing. Uh, it's always uh, that one soothes, soothes your soul. Uh, we got... Uh, uh, U.S. Blues after that. Yeah, some people made a big deal because they played three encores. Uh, they only played two two songs out of space, so they owed you one anyway. Uh, we get U.S. Blues, last show of the summer. Uh, here we go, another summertime, come and gone, my oh my. Uh, really hard to believe we were starting this one off late in May and uh, outside of Boston and and here we are, it's uh, summer 2018 is, is in the books. Uh, uh, great, you get Ripple uh, ne to, to close the whole thing. So there's your three encores. Boy, that to me was just a, 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 fa a fabulous night of music. I thought it was out of sight, had the time of my life. I uh, thought the whole weekend was, uh, was a hell of a party. I can't find a whole lot to complain about. Uh, I know all of you can help me do that because I was reading through some of the commentary and uh, uh, some of you all are sour fuckers. I know what you're thinking. Uh, uh, you complain too, motherfucker, and I do sometimes. It's just analysis. Uh, you know, we don't criticize, we analyze. We talk about the music we love so much and the musicians behind it. As I sat there at Lockin, uh, I just thought... Uh, listen, regardless of how these guys came across or how they sounded to anybody, that festival and the vast majority of musicians that were there exist musically because the Grateful Dead existed. Because Bob Weir uh, uh, decided to uh, follow his gifts and talents and, and apply them and because Jerry Garcia, you know, decided to spend his life applying his gifts and talents, you know, giving music to us and uh, and and Mickey and and Billy and uh, you know and even Phil, you know, wasn't there. I might have been probably the first lock, and Phil wasn't there. Uh, but uh, you know, these guys that are up there gave their life for the music. Uh, it gave them an amazing life, no doubt about that. Uh, but like that whole festival exists and the majority of the musicians in it because the Grateful Dead existed and uh, that's just a powerful testimony. It's, uh, it's looking at uh, what you left behind before you've even left it. Uh, they have uh, blazed the trail that has now just become an amazing path for so many musicians and uh, uh, for me, I felt blessed to be a part of it. Uh, I can't thank... Uh, 
Peter Shapiro enough for taking great care of me, his staff, Brad, and uh, and everybody there from, from top to bottom that uh, helped us get in and took great care of us while we were there. It was a wonderful time. Loved it. Loved seeing so many uh, uh, you guys out there. So many hugs. So much love. Uh, it was a fa it was a fantastic weekend. This one was top of the charts. I love you long time. Love you forever. It's time to make the fucking donuts. Here we go.